A 7.8 magnitude earthquake, one of the strongest in Philippine history, shook northern Luzon in July of 1990. <laughs> In Cabanatuan, the quake's epicenter, the Christian colleges of the Philippines collapsed, burying some 200 students and teachers. This boy rescuers are talking to had his legs pinned down by concrete slabs. When rescuers found him, he begged them to cut off his legs so he could be released. Siguro po talaga naman puputulin nato eh. Durog na po ang mga buto ko sa paa. Manhid na buong katawan ko. 154 people died from the collapse of this six-story building alone. The quake hit Baguio City. 28 buildings and 130 houses crumbled to the ground, leaving hundreds of people trapped under the rubble. We barely have time to... All I did was grab the, first, the, ne the nearest person and then push her under the table. Huh? Then I followed. And all you can hear is just go, just go, you know. And then shouting and wailing of women. Mm -hmm. And then dust all over. Mm -hmm. Then after that, you know. The Northern Luzon earthquake caused $369 million worth of damages and more than 2,400 deaths. Experts predict an earthquake more vicious than this will happen in Metro Manila anytime soon. They call it the big one. The proposals are telling us that this might happen to us at any time. Four years after the catastrophic North Luzon earthquake, a 7.1 magnitude tremor rocked Mindoro. Hindi yan pa lang po sa may harapan namin, sinakluban na po ako ng tubig, tapos napaikot-ikot na kami. Sigawan na kami, naghahanap ang kami, kung nasa ang mga bata. The earthquake was so strong, it generated a tsunami, or giant waves of water that washed out and devastated some small villages and islands in the province just a few minutes after the shock. Houses, roads, bridges, and ports were destroyed. Power lines and the water supply were disrupted for weeks. More than 22,000 families were affected, 430 were injured, and 77 people died from the quake and the tsunami. In 2013, the strongest earthquake to hit the Philippines in more than two decades struck central Visayas. Structures old and new didn't stand a chance against a 7.1 magnitude quake. Bohol took the worst beating. Of the 222 casualties, 209 were in Bohol. Sa nakalipas na isang daang taon, meron na tayong 100 at least, no? Na damaging earthquakes. Out of this, meron na tayong 40 tsunami events. The Philippines sits at the Pacific Ring of Fire. Plates or large pieces of the Earth's crust collide. Geologists say the country's location is unusual. The Philippine tectonic plate dives under the Eurasian plate. They are what we call subducting against each other. And it is these um, processes that brings the Philippines to being very prone to uh, and very susceptible to earthquakes. A 7.2 magnitude earthquake, or the big one, is predicted to devastate the Philippines. The epicenter, Metro Manila. It will be as strong as 64 atomic bomb explosions. Hindi ka makatayo at pwedeng matagal ang pagyanig. Yung mga nakabitin ay magsasway violently. Pwedeng magkaroon ng mga damage ang uh, mahinang building o kahit bago kung ang uh, mga materyales ay hindi ayos o di kaya ay disenyo ay hindi ayos. 
A 2004 study says most of the buildings in Metro Manila will collapse, tear down almost all the water pipelines, bring total darkness due to power loss, disrupt cellular signal, and the big one will destroy countless homes, endangering 15 million lives. And preparing does not mean only you know, learning how to follow the dock cover and hold process, but way before, even way before the event happens, the earthquake happens, there must be institutionalized uh, procedures already, like for example, strengthening the buildings as far as their civil design, um, structural design is concerned, for example, and so on and so forth. Maraming bumabagsak. Ang bumabagsak kasi hindi naman siya naaayon sa mga dapat na sinusunod. Katulad ng ibang mga bahay, maraming bumagsak na bahay ng Bukol Earthquake. Sila yung mga may parang pinalusot o ang materialis na ginamit ay hindi tama. The National Building Code of 1977 dictates structural standards, but the code needs to be constantly updated and more importantly, implemented. I think it's a map. Basically, uh, what you have now is like a salad of different types of buildings. You have old ones and newer ones. Now, of course, the older structures were not designed using these new codes. So the newer codes have what we call uh, seismic detailing already provided for. Seismic referring to earthquake. If the, the buildings are constructed using this uh, following the code, then you expect that the buildings will perform better. Pagdating sa lindol, uh, ang talagang bawal tayuan ay yung mismong dinadaanan ng aktibong fault at may buffer zone tayong pinapairal. Sa kasalukuyan, sa mga, sa mga faults ay at least 5 meters on both sides. Sa kamay nilaan, uh, very much aware ang mga local governments sa so pagdating ng permit process, ay sinisigurado nilang hindi nila bibigyan ng permit yung mga bagong itatay yung building. The bad news is houses were built on the no-build zones way before it was declared. Worse yet, some communities turn a blind eye on the warnings. A website application to help people steer clear of fault lines called Hazard Hunter PH was even developed by the Philippine Institute of Volcanology and Seismology or FIVOX in 2016. Doon mo makikita kung nasaan yung fault at gaano kalayo yung lugar na pinagtayo ng bahay mong bibilhin mong lote kung may fault o wala. Warning systems are also a must. Government reports say that the country has 74 seismic stations, 36 tsunami detection stations, and 10 tsunami early warning systems to date. Media and telecommunication companies also work with the government in disseminating massive information. But experts say a machine that can predict when an earthquake will strike has not yet been invented. What we can do for now is to prepare safe individual and family and safe community. And of course, lahat ng efforts na yan ay magagawa natin kung may tamang science-based information, tamang preparedness information, and lastly, participation ng bawat lahat. Learning how to react during earthquakes, like doing the simple duck, cover, and hold, can increase our chances of survival. Participate in the earthquake drills conducted by your local authorities and other private companies. We should not forget about um, having a go bag, for example, at home. It's basic water that can last for three days, food, but uh, this sort of packaged food, preferably sealed and uh, airtight. Because imagine, for example, you are buried underneath a rubble, right? You cannot go out for three days and, until the rescue comes then make sure that you can survive in the next three days. And then uh, medicine, know the design of your house so that uh, if a disaster happens, an earthquake happens, for example, you know where to go, where to run. You go to the sturdiest part or the strongest part of your house. Do not run outside, especially if there could be other sources of hazards like uh, electrical posts, um, collapsing buildings, collapsing and so on. So the general instruction is 
not to immediately go outside, stay put, but look for a cover to protect yourself. Based on experience from the strongest earthquakes, disaster response takes days, sometimes even weeks. Improving our rescue and relief operations is a game changer. Halimbawa ay makat off yung transportation, makat off yung main supply route natin or highway. So meron tayo dapat alternative of delivering uh, supplies from the provinces to Metro Manila. So kailangan din uh, may gagawin yung ating utilities, water utilities. And uh, meron ang ginagawa rin ang, ano, ang itong Manila, Maynila and Manila Water. And one of the government agencies uh, we rely on, you know, ensuring supply of relief food, including food items, is of course DSWD. The big one is not a matter of if, it's just a matter of when. If we level up our preparedness, we can make the difference between life and death.